guys and welcome back to my channel Rita Stories. So today I thought we'd do something a little bit different, mix it up a bit. Um, I wanted to do a quick Q&A session with my partner Peter and we'll talk about all things pregnancy and how we have found our journey. Obviously everyone's pregnancy journey is very very different um, from previous experiences to how they're feeling to how it's affected them hormone levels are very different and so that could play a big part on how you found your pregnancy and how it differs from how we found our pregnancy experience so what we'll do is take you guys downstairs get comfy on the couch and I'll introduce you to my partner Peter and I'll ask him some quick fire questions, questions that he's not yet seen before. And so it'll be really interesting to hear his answers and how they might differ from my perspective on certain things. So come join me with our Q&A on our pregnancy journey. So here we have Peter, my partner, and Fitzroy, our fur baby. Yes, let's get straight into it. I've got some questions that I have pre-prepared and written down that I'm gonna ask you. And I want to know your thoughts. And if you have any questions to ask me, I wanna try and answer them as honestly as possible as well. So as mentioned, it's gonna be just some quick fire questions about our upcoming labor and all things to do with pregnancy. So let's get into it. So Pisa, do you think we are having a boy or a girl? I think we are having a boy. Any and reason why? Because it's, it seems to be moving quite a lot. I just got, my instincts are saying it's a boy. Okay. No other reason apart from having a dream that it was a girl, but normally my dreams are opposite, so. Okay. <laughs> so you think we're having a boy? Do you think the baby's gonna be born in the daytime, so morning, early afternoon, or more evening time, so evening, night time? It's gonna be a day or night baby? I will go with a night baby, because if it's a boy, it may take after me. And you're a, a night more. owl? And looking back at myself, in my younger years, definitely I was a night owl. Okay. I was a night person. I'm definitely someone who is more of an early bird. So if this baby takes after me at all, it will be born in the morning. And actually for me, I was born around 7 or 7.30 a.m. That's the time I came into the world. Do you I remember think... what time you came into the world? Yes, I think I was a, a, a nighttime baby. Oh, that would explain, okay. Do you think our baby is going to be heavy or light? So if we use a midpoint of say, six and a half pounds, do you think it's going to be heavier or lighter than six and a half pounds? I think it's going to be close around six and a half pounds mark, gauging on your, your size, I would have guessed. So for those of you who aren't aware, or if I've not mentioned it before, the last couple of scans, the baby has measured quite small and more or less in the 13 percentile in the very last scan. So that means out of 100 babies, if you were to line them all up according to weight, ours would be number 13 out of 100, 100 being the heaviest, one being the lightest in weight. So that's where we sit in the percentiles. So we're about 13, which is definitely a smaller, lighter baby. So we know that we're definitely not going to have a nine or a 10 pound baby. So that's why when I ask you the question, if we're going to have a light or heavy baby, we used a, a lighter kind of measurement for this scale, for this questioning. So you think... Six and a half, close to that. You think roughly six and a half? Six and a half. Okay. If you could pick three physical traits from you that you would pass on to the baby physical traits, what would they be? My height. I mean, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but I'm not the shortest. Okay. Uh, and if it was a boy or even a girl, a good amount of height. I mean, they, they, they say correlation of height and success. That's true. Is a thing. So I'm five foot two, five foot three on a good day or five foot three first thing in the morning before I start shrinking throughout the day. So I'm definitely on the shorter side. So, okay, I agree with that. I would want 
the baby to have your height are these, over mine. Are these all physical? I said physical traits. Okay, physical. My hair, I guess. Like, uh, I, I'm lucky enough to have hair. <laughs> You're uh, not bald. At, at this age. Okay. Um, a lot of my friends are balding, so I'll say hair. But we're just talking strictly me now. Right. Yeah. So hair, and then I guess the last one is really struggling here. Your eyebrows? You've got strong brows. You think so? I think strong brows are good because it frames your face. Okay, let's go with that one. Strong, strong <laughs> brows. I was, I was going to say hands. Hands? Why, why your hands? Because normally guys have, I've been told this, really grubby, like they, look, they bite their nails, they look after their nails very well. Oh. And they don't have... You used to tell me that I've got really soft hands, so... He does have very soft hands. Very good with physical labour, so that's probably why. That's true, uh, <laughs> as well. So it was either hands, but you're saying eyebrows, so... No, but if you could pick, you'd pick your hands. I mean, that's a really strange one. Okay. Uh, I'd rather go with brows. <laughs> All right. So just to recap, it was your height, your hair on your head, and your brows. And a backup would be your hands. Those would be your physical traits that you would want to pass on to the baby from you? Yes, I'm just trying to think of anything, yeah. So my next question is, what three physical traits from me would you want the baby to have? It would probably be your nose. Okay. Because it's gonna inherit either one of our traits and I've got a terrible nose, I, I feel anyway. It could be a, a blend of noses. Then it would probably be your, your abs. <laughs> my abs. Yeah, strong abs. So the funny thing about that is because for most of the scans that I've gone in for, not just scans, but midwife appointments, the uh, midwife that I get um, has mentioned that I've got strong, tight abs. And they feel like that could be partly the reason why my bump is very slight. It definitely is on the smaller scale and they just think that I'm holding the baby in. So my abs, <laughs> okay. My nose and my abs, one more. Your complexion. Ooh. I think you've got a very unique complexion for our ethnicity. Okay. It's because I'm a bit darker than... You're, you're darker and you have like quite nice olive skin sometimes. Um, and when you tan, you do go very dark, I but when dark. we live in a country where there's not much sun, so you yeah. get tan all year round, so... <laughs> okay, that's good. So, do you think the baby would look more like you or more like me? Bearing in mind, we don't know the sex of the baby. Do you have a gut feeling of... I, I yeah, I will say, because my gut feeling is it's a boy, it's probably going to look a bit more like me. Okay. And they do say that the male genes are, are more dominant, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm going with my instincts, it would probably look more like me, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. How do you think Fitzroy, our dog here, will respond, very tired dog, will respond to the baby and us bringing the baby home and all of that and introducing the baby to him? I think it's going to be a difficult adjustment for him because we give him so much attention at the moment. Um, we hold him a lot, we spend a lot of time playing with him. Give him lots of cuddles at the moment and he is completely spoilt in terms of the amount of love and affection that we shower him with. So, so I, I don't think he's going he's gonna to like it um, personally. Fitzroy does love children. Every time we're with friends who bring kids over or we go to their house or we're in a park, he loves and warms to all children. But I don't know if that will be applied when it's our child that we will have with us 24-7. So you think it might be a bit of a struggle and a bit of an adjustment? I, I wouldn't say it's a bit. That's probably putting it in a British politeness way. A bit <laughs> normally means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna struggle. I think it's gonna be a struggle. Oh, Maybe something we can, we can update. Yes, we'll have to update People you. Want, uh, yeah. We'll have to film something like the introduction of the baby and Fitzroy or something and see okay. how that goes. That, that'd, that'd be, be quite cool. Yeah. And something that we can look back on later. Yeah. Okay. What are you most excited about in parenthood? Watching the little one walk for the first time. Oh, okay. Um, first words. 
So the bigger milestones, you're oh, excited for those. Yes. But also just like holding the baby. Because technically you've been pretty much holding the baby. Been carrying the baby. Carrying the baby. Yeah. And, and looking in their eyes, because I think that the connection, I mean, very important to, to get that connection with, with your child and, and build that bond. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that'd be a, a lovely thing to have. And I can imagine it will feel quite um, invigorating. That's, that's, I think that's the ones I want to say. Okay. Uh, so just a couple more questions left. What are you most nervous about? in the whole of parenthood again? The lack of sleep. So that's what I'm really nervous about is the tiredness. And How that's going to affect us and our day to day. The but the good thing is, is, yeah. is that when you do go back to work after paternity, you don't have a, a long commute, you're not driving, you'll be catching the train. So it, that's a good thing because no matter how sleep deprived you are, at least you can kind of rest and snooze a little bit on the train. You're not having to then do a one or two plus hour commute on a motorway or city driving or anything like that. So that's good from that point of view. I'd be worried if you had to do like a long commute every day, like five days a week. And his paternity leave is only two weeks. And so you're kind of, will be really kind of in the thick of things when um, you actually go back to work. So that is a bit of a worry. And it'll be interesting to see what other people think about the paternity leave in the UK, because it's, it's statutory only two weeks. And if it's it more, it's up to your company. But in other countries in Europe, like Netherlands, for example, it's six weeks. So it's, it would be interesting to see whether it's two weeks enough. Do you think what would be the ideal uh, as a minimum? Yeah. So if anyone's got any comments on that, make sure you uh, comment down below and let us know your thoughts on paternity leave or how much your companies or your partner's companies are giving. So it'd be interesting to, to know actually if most companies stick to the statutory or whether most companies kind of add extra weeks on. Two more questions from me. Most surprising thing you've found or noticed in pregnancy? And when I say pregnancy, in our pregnancy. Surprising things? Yeah, just something that's just surprised you that, oh, you didn't expect that would happen or that you would see that or feel that experience. I'm, that. I'm really surprised how you are not as un uncomfortable as I thought you would be. I would have thought you'd be a lot more uncomfortable and show it. Um, so I'm really surprised how you've been dealing with that. And that's probably to do with the size. Yeah, I definitely think that being, having the bump on the smaller side and the baby obviously measurings again smaller has made the pregnancy for me easier. I'm not kind of carrying a lot more weight. I'm not struggling up and down stairs, which I've seen other pregnant women yes. struggle with. But obviously this is my first pregnancy to this stage. And so I've got really got nothing to compare it to. It'll be interesting if we have another child, if we're blessed with another pregnancy, another child, to know how that fares versus this pregnancy. Will I be a lot bigger? because my body is already stretched out so much. So yeah, that would be interesting. I would say I was surprised that you're not as bloated as much. I, I know you had cankles. I had cankles, yes. That didn't last very long. So I had cankles or experienced cankles, which is very swollen ankles, when we went on our baby moon in our at the end of our second, beginning of our third trimester. And we went on holiday and straight after the flight going there, had really swollen ankles. And then throughout the holiday, the holiday was a one week holiday, it kind of settled down. And then when we flew back to the UK and we came home, the first couple of days, again, really, really swollen, fat ankles. It was quite a sight. Um, I've never seen my ankles that bloated, that swollen before. <laughs> what was the question again? What were the anything that surprised you the most or shocked you? Oh, shocked is another question, but we can roll this into one question. Surprising or shocked things in our pregnancy? Um, I don't know if this one we could oh, have in it, but... I might have to edit this out. Dacia, I would say. <laughs> yes. Not from this end. <laughs> no. Uh, definitely a lot more gassier, just reflux. For me, I was actually surprised 
at there's quite a lot of things actually that surprised me about pregnancy which I didn't really realize I think people don't necessarily talk about it as much I was very surprised that basically from the very beginning I have had pretty much since finding out that we were pregnant since doing the pregnancy test just interrupted sleep night after night after night it has been quite exhausting and i thought that pregnant women only kind of say oh you're always needing the toilet towards the end of their pregnancy when the weight of the baby is sitting on their bladder but actually from reading doing more research about pregnancy even at the beginning because of your hormones they spike in all the different hormones and everything else like that your body is just needing to detox and flush toxins out so you're constantly needing the toilet so that's something that really surprised me i would say another thing that surprised me is my belly button turning from an innie to is, at the moment it's not an outie it's just flat so it looks like someone's just like stretched out my belly and my innie has turned just flat now and as it has become flat it's become more and more sensitive as it's like rubbing against my clothes. And so I've noticed for me, it's felt really sensitive as the innies become more exposed. Other things would be definitely Braxton Hicks. I have had probably halfway through the pregnancy, I'd say, like halfway through the second trimester, more and more Braxton Hicks. And they, it's just so weird and such a weird sensation to feel your entire stomach so tight and so like rock solid hard for 30 to like 30 seconds to a minute, say, or a minute and a half. And it gets more and more uncomfortable as the baby gets bigger and as you progress through the different weeks and the different trimesters. So I think that was quite surprising for me as well. Oh, and the other thing, kicking and movements of the baby. I would say that that was quite a surprising thing. Again, it's because it's one of those things that until you experience it yourself, it's really, really hard to... Uh, know what it feels like and every person every woman probably experiences it and feels it differently or they interpret it, interpret it differently as a feeling so that was quite weird I think for me those were quite big ones did you, okay so those are all my questions did you have any questions for me any oh here we go so one of my questions is what did you find most difficult about being pregnant so I would say for sure, I found the thing that was most difficult was the beginning bit of pregnancy where we were still quite unsure if this pregnancy would stick and if we were gonna go through another heartbreak. And so I think the most difficult thing for me, I was very, very nervous and on edge, probably for the first full, one maybe one and a half trimesters so that's like 12 to say 16 18 weeks i think i i was just nervous every time i felt a twinge i was like oh my goodness are we losing the baby every time i went to the toilet i would be looking for spotting blood what have you and every time i didn't feel anything i'm like is the baby still there so i think had we not gone through all the heartache that we went through previously, I think it would have been actually quite an enjoyable pregnancy. I mean, I wasn't terribly sick with pregnancy nausea or anything like that, but having gone through our experiences, it's just made me very on edge. And I think that was quite a struggle for me on a day to day, for sure. That was quite hard. Mm. My Second question, which is on the other end of the spectrum. What have you found the most enjoyable in your pregnancy? I would say one of the things that I found quite enjoyable, or two things, but they're interlinked, is feeling the baby properly like kick and punch for the first time. So at the beginning when we felt baby movements, I didn't really identify that as baby movements. I just felt maybe it's gas. <laughs> Then finding out that the sensations that I felt were the baby kind of moving and wriggling around. But as the baby got bigger, then the movements got a bit more pronounced. And then, then I could feel actual kicks and punches. So I think for me, that was 
quite nice because it gave me the reassurance that the baby's safe, the baby's healthy, it's moving around, it's alive, it's viable, all of those things. The second thing, which I said was kind of interlinked, is having you feel the baby kick and move for the first couple of times. And so I put Peter's hand on my, on my belly and he felt it move. And there's been other instances where he's looked at my belly and I've been wearing a, a top with lots of patterns on it and then the pattern would suddenly like jump and it would move or wriggle and you can see it. And that was, was nice because prior to that, I felt that everything was something that I experienced and I experienced more so on my own, but then having the baby move and having you feel it, it was something that we could finally kind of enjoy together and experience together with this pregnancy. So that was, that was nice. Third question, what is your biggest worry? Doesn't have to be during pregnancy. But... Are you talking about pregnancy, post-pregnancy? Are you talking about after that being like parenthood in general? Let's go with one for during pregnancy and one after that. I think one of my bigger worries that I have from now until post-pregnancy would be the big one, the birth, just because you don't know how it's gonna go. You can prepare, we've been doing hypnobirthing, we've been trying to stay as active as possible. I've been walking the little one here. So making sure that I'm trying to stay as active as possible just because I know that that's gonna help with the birth. But ultimately, if the birth doesn't go to plan, I, I am worried about that. And I'm also worried about the my pain threshold. I generally think that I've got quite a high tolerance of pain, but this is going to be something I've never experienced before. So I've, again, until you've experienced it, you can't really know what you're getting into. So I'm scared about birth, which is a big, big thing. In terms of after birth, I think my main worries, I've probably got two, but again, they're not really interlinked, but I've got two. And I would say the health of the baby would be something I'd be worried about. We've done all the scans and testings throughout the pregnancy that the NHS provides and everything, touch wood, has been fine. But, you know, you always worry that when the baby comes out, there might be a health condition that wasn't picked up or they couldn't test for. So that's something. But then in parenthood, and I'm thinking probably more short term, probably the first six to 12 months of life, I would be most worried about SIDS, which is something you can't really worry about because if it happens, it happens. But sudden infant death syndrome is something that is on my mind. Um, I don't mean to be morbid or anything, but it'd just be devastating. And so a lot of the products uh, that we've bought for the nursery, we've done quite a lot of research to try and have as many like smart gadgets as possible that might help us and give us some peace of mind. Um, so I think those are my big worries. The birth, the baby um, having any health problems and SIDS. And from my last question here, um, what are you most excited about? I am most excited about meeting our baby for the first time. That will be I'm hoping a, a really magical moment, providing that I'm awake for it. Like I mentioned, don't know what's going to happen with the birth. Might be put under general anaesthetic completely. You never know. But yes, meeting the baby for the first time, just building that bond and that relationship that you kind of mentioned earlier as well. Really looking forward to that. And just what... I kind of like what you mentioned as well, actually. Just like seeing all the milestones, walking, crawling, smiling, speaking for the first time, all of those like big moments. I think that would be really, really rewarding as a parent to know that you've brought your child up and you've seen them grow and develop into this little human. I'm really looking forward to that. I can't wait for that first cuddle with the baby and smelling that newborn baby smell. That would be really, really, really exciting. And um, yeah, I'm really- There is something about that, right? 
the smell of a newborn baby or that. I don't. It's just us. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's the thing. I don't know if it's the pheromones or something or the vernix. So the the white waxy substance that comes out with the baby, like when they're coated with that. I don't know what it is, but it does last for a while. So maybe it isn't the vernix. Maybe it's just the pheromones, or maybe it's us because it's our baby. We're just attracted to that smell. If that makes sense. I don't know. Oh, can't wait. Cool. All right. So that wraps up our Q&A. Um, let me know what you guys thought. Comment down below. We'll have to, like I mentioned, <laughs> film their uh, introduction, how he um, responds to the new baby. <laughs> he does not like that. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we are releasing new content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.